All right, so this is the first video in a new playlist that I'm making about messaging APIs. So what I'm going to be talking about in this playlist in various videos is how do you communicate between different tabs, different windows? If you've got a window with an embedded frame, an iframe, if you've got workers or service workers, and you need to send messages back and forth between those, how do you do it? So that's what this series is about. And this first video is specifically about the broadcast channel API. So it's one way that you can broadcast a message. And as long as any one of these things, the windows, tabs, iframes, frames, workers, service workers, if any of those things listens on the proper channel, so you create a channel that's got a unique label. And as long as they're listening on that channel, you can receive a message or you can send a message. And then all the other elements are going to pick up the message that you're sending out on that broadcast channel. It's a lot like a, a radio station. So everybody can, or ham radio operators, you know, you can broadcast, you can receive. And as long as everybody's on the same channel, then everybody hears what you're saying and you hear what everybody else is saying. So that is the broadcast channel. So let's jump into the code here. Simple little HTML file. I've got a little section with two buttons and a text field. The two buttons. One, to open a brand new tab. So when I click on this, it opens the tab. It's going to run the same JavaScript file. I'm going to open another copy of this page, and it will have the same script running as this page. And we can send messages then back and forth between them using this. So type your message here, click send, and it will be broadcast to the other tab or tabs, if there's multiple tabs, as well as we'll do an example with service worker. So that's what we have here for these controls. A little, dis a little section to display the message. So when I receive a message from somewhere, it's going to display here. Text message, button send, button open. Those are our controls. All right, so jumping into our scripts. I have a shell of a script here, which is the one that's attached to each copy of broadcast.html. And I've got a service worker with just sort of the placeholders for these standard event listeners that you would have with any service worker. And we're actually not going to do anything in any of these. We're just going to leave that blank, but it's still going to work. So I'll show you how that is going to happen. All right. So DOM content loaded. Page first initially loads. The DOM is red, and then we want our script to run. First step, I'm going to add my button listeners. So we've got those two buttons, the BTN open, BTN send. So document Okay, so there we have the two buttons. We're adding a click listener to each one of them and we're going to call a function. When the BTN open button is clicked, I'm going to call this function here, this open tab function. So it's inside my app namespace. So app.open tab. That's the function I'm going to call and for the other one, the send message. It's this one right here. So app dot send message. All right. Those are my listeners. So now I've got the listeners attached to those two buttons, but my functions aren't doing anything. Let's do this one first, the open tab. It's a simple one. It's really just one line of code. Um, we're going to call window dot open. And then the page that we want to open, it's just the one that we're looking at right now, the broadcast.html. If you do want to um, maintain a reference to that other window, if you want to be able to run scripts against that other window or close it, you can save it. So we could create a variable, let's call it app.win. And then up inside of here, we'll create a variable called win. We'll set it to null to begin with. There, and app.win, this is now my reference to the most recent window that I've opened. If I open a whole bunch of them, well, then it's only going to be holding one unless I make this into an array and I'm pushing it into the array. But whatever the case, um, you can save a reference to this window. So let's check that out. We'll start the script running. Broadcast.html. I'll close the, other, the old copy of this. And clicking here, sure enough, opens another tab. This one can click and open another tab too. This one... You can open as many as you want. And it's up to the browsers, the setting in the browsers as to whether it's a new window or a new tab, but we're opening new tabs here. Okay, so we have that script running. Now, to send a message. Well, it's great to be able to send a message, but we have to be able to receive it as well. And 
the broadcast API, we haven't hooked that up yet. We're going to do that just here inside of our namespace. I'm going to create a property called channel. And this is going to be my reference to this broadcast channel that I create. Very simple to do. New broadcast channel. And then inside of here, it takes a name, just a string. So I'm going to call mine WKRP. There we go. I have now created a new broadcast channel. And I've saved the reference inside this variable. So when I want to send a message, all I have to do, it's here. Okay, we're getting it out of text message. That's the input on the page right here. So I'm in send message, I'm extracting the value out of that. And as long as it's not empty, then I can send a message. So I am going to say channel, that's our reference to the broadcast channel, and post message, I'm oh, sorry, app.channel, app.channel post message, and it takes an object, whatever you want, whatever kind of data type you want. Typically it's going to be an object, so I'll have an object inside of here, and I'm going to have a property inside my object called message. It's not a reserved word. It's just what I'm calling it. And the value is going to be this, whatever string I pulled out of here. So there we go. There is my message that I'm going to send. When I receive it right here, got message. Well, this we want to trigger this whenever a message is received. Right now, we're not listening for it. We can send messages. So, okay, fine. On here, I type a message and click send. The message was broadcast on our WKRP channel, but nobody was listening, so nobody got the message. We need to listen for it. So we're going to listen for broadcast messages. And that is as simple as app.channel.addEventListener. And what we're listening for is the message event. What do we want to have happen? We're going to call app.godMessage. So right down here, got message. This function is going to run whenever a message is received on any channel. Sorry, not any channel, on our broadcast channel. So message event on our channel, which is the WKRP one. We're going to call this function the EV. That is going to be the broadcast message event. And so this message event is there. And as long as that was passed to this function, and there's a property inside of that event called data, then that is this thing right here. This object that we put inside, that is data. That object is going to be called data. And I want to get whatever's inside of this object under the property message. So MSG right here, this thing, that is what I want. That's what I'm going to write out on my page. So we'll find our section down here called messages. We're going to write the message out here. So let's say uh, document and there we are. We'll put a little label in front of it. Okay. So we have a listener for message, which is going to call this function, as long as it's got a data property, as long as this wasn't null, then we're going to find the thing called messages and we're going to add to its inner HTML. We're going to write out whatever the message was. All right, let's try this out. So all of these will double check. We'll refresh them all to make sure that they've all got the latest version of our script. And We'll send a message. Now, nothing happens here because I'm not receiving a message. I'm sending it. So the page that sends it is not going to be receiving it. Received, received, and received. So the other channels all received our message. Send again. There it is. These pages haven't refreshed to get this. They just received it. They had a listener that was listening for the broadcast on the right channel. And sure enough, there it is. 
So our last step is working with Service Worker. It's very much the same thing. The send message, that's going to work. That's sending it not just to the other tabs, but anybody listening for this channel. So our last step is really just to sort of replicate what we did right here. In our Service Worker, we're going to, and here, let me uh, split this actually into two sides. There we go. Over here in my service worker, I've got all those other listeners and that's great, but I don't need to use the message one here. So I'm just going to create a new variable called channel. And that is going to be a new within this context, within this service worker. I'm creating a new broadcast channel and I'm going to listen to this same unique name, the same name that I used here. So I'm now connected or able to listen to the same channel. If I want to receive a message, I do the same thing that I did before. Channel, add event listener, and message is the listener that I want. EV, and in my function, if the event is there, and ev.data, and let's say ev data dot message. If I've got that property as well, I know I'm receiving something in this format. And if I do, I'm going to send a message back. So I'm going to create a function called send back. Just because in a service worker, there's nothing, nowhere for me to really display stuff. I could write something to the console if I wanted, but instead I'm going to send a message back. I'm going to send a message from the service worker back to every tab that's open that is sharing this service worker. And so we're going to have to register our service worker so that this script runs on all of our tabs. And we'll do that in just a minute. Send back. We'll just say, thanks for the message. Um, we could put a variable in here and keep track of the number. So we could increment thanks for the message one, two, three, four. If we want to do that, we could use a global variable. Uh, if you want, you can take this message and you can turn that into an actual file and put it in a response object and then write that into the cache. So you could save cached copies of the JSON that is coming in all of these messages. So we can take ev.data.message, do json.stringify on that message, turn it into a string, put that into a file object, a blob object, wrap that in a response, and then we can open up a cache and save it. So we can have a message cache where we save all of our mes messages on the person's computer. Anyway, we are we don't need to get into all that. All I want to do is be able to, at this point, send a message back to all of the pages saying, thanks, I received this message. And actually, let's put a timestamp on it. We'll say thanks for the message at, and we'll call date dot now. We'll just get a timestamp and put that in there. Okay, and then we're, there it is, send back message. So this string is being passed to this function, and then this function will do the same thing as what we had done over here, this channel post message. And I'll format it in the exact same way so that my script that's already dealing with things in that format will be able to take this and write it out as received. Okay, last step, register the service worker. So this is actually running on our page. So we're going to add that. We'll say navigator dot service worker dot register. And then what's the name of it? Well, it's our broad sw.js. There we go. Save that. Okay, now let's take a look inside of here. We'll go over to the application tab to make sure. Ah, okay, let's refresh this. There we go. So here's our service worker up and running. So this number activated running. So let's try sending a message. Hello to my service worker. Send. And we got back. This is the message that came back to us from the service worker. And on the, all the other pages, 
they got the message from my tab and they got the callback from the service worker. So if this final one, message from fourth tab, send it. Okay, the service worker did receive it. Service worker received it and this message was broadcast to everybody as well. And that's it. That is the broadcast channel API. It's as simple as that. So you just create this channel and you post message or you listen for the message event on the channel object. So it's not in here. It's not the message event on self, but it's the message event on the channel object that we're listening for here. And same thing here on the channel object, you listen for the message event. And then on the channel object, post message. All right. So I hope that helps you out. If you're looking for a copy of the code, you'll find a link down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.